Hello there, welcome to my channel. I am Brian Lomax and I've recently, well, just today, in fact, just finished the first season of The Chosen. Now, if, if, if you're a regular to my channel, you know the kind of content I usually do, horror movies, action movies, this kind of thing, you might not have the first clue what The Chosen is. So I'll tell you, uh, it's, so it's a, it's, I believe it's the most successfully crowdfunded um, TV show slash movie, what it, you know, things in that vein that that has ever been. Uh, so it 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 has ra it raised millions to complete its first season, and in order to watch it, which you can do for free, all you have to do is download the app, uh, the chosen app. So if you've got like a Amazon Fire Stick or whatever, you just look up the chosen app download it and then you can watch the series so this is a tv show that is a it, it, it basically follows the life of jesus and his disciples uh, and it kind of reinterprets many of the stories you find in the new testament and, and fleshes them out and i know there'll be there'll be many people in certain quarters that say you should never do that it's heretical this that and the other dramatic license and all that uh, it, it's just look it's a tv show and if you if you want the biblical source then go to the biblical source uh, you know you should never use anything like this to replace the, the bible but i do think stuff like this can inform our understanding of the bible in a very unique way um now Given that I've already mentioned this is a biblical thing that that may may already have many of you running for the hills thinking no not for me but uh, I, I do have to admit right off the bat I am someone you know I'm a Christian people who, who know me know this if, if you're not if you're not new to my channel you probably know it already but uh, I have a difficult relationship with uh with with most christian media most christian media I, I i tend to hate to be honest i find it mostly patronizing i find it very one-sided i i i look at it and i kind of cringe as a christian myself um you know i take most christian movies and they're, they're movies i would not show i i wouldn't even want to watch them myself let alone show them to someone who is a non-christian um because i don't feel like they do a good job of really telling them or showing them why it is somebody has a faith in Jesus Christ. So why, why the heck would I show them something that, that doesn't do that very well? Um, so yeah, what I can say about The Chosen, uh, this is season one, by the way, that I've just watched. Uh, there is a second season uh, on the app as well, and there is a third season on the way. Just on the first season, it's incredible uh, for me, uh, and I'll say it's right, right, right off the bat. No qualms. Uh, even as someone who's been involved in the making of several Christian movies, this is the best Christian film slash series I've ever seen. So there's eight episodes, and it deals with the start of Jesus's ministry. You know, just as he's starting to reveal himself, just as people are starting to like, take notice of this guy, this preacher moving through. Jerusalem and whatnot and I'm just like I watched it with my wife and it's taken me this long to watch it to be honest my, my, my wife is ill and we wanted we wanted to watch this together and that's quite hard to do for us because one we hope we home educate our kids and my wife is ill so she spends a lot of time in bed and it, it just it, there's never the right time to sit down together and watch it uh, but I will say something that has made that last longer is that this show has such a profound impact on my life that she can only watch one episode at a time. Uh, and and I'll, I'll admit, it, it kind of did the same with me. I am more of the, the mind that I, I can binge watch something, but um, my, my wife needed time to recover from each episode. And I, I don't get quite as emotional. Uh, you know, at least I certainly don't show it uh, as much as my wife. But um, I have to say... Certainly, like the first five episodes of this, I just remember getting to the end of each episode and thinking, damn it, there's not one of these episodes yet have I come out of and not ended up in tears. I just think it does an amazing job 
of putting you and you can and you can argue about the historical accuracy of these small details this that and the other but that the important thing is the story and the characters and the relational stuff that's going on that that really keys you in to why anybody would believe in this man Jesus Christ who claimed to be the son of God um, and, and, and why that spawned a, a following that lasts even today throughout millions of people's lives, billions of people's lives. Um, and I just think, if, if, yeah, if you watch it, I think you'll get a sense as to why. Because uh, I, I see the relational stuff in this and it's handled so brilliantly, so beautifully. Uh, stuff with Nicodemus, there's this character called Nicodemus who's a Pharisee and obviously he's... He comes from the, the religious elite who are very much about the law and you see how Jesus impacts his life and how he's torn between that world and this new world that Jesus wants to bring. Eric Avari as Nicodemus is really great, great throughout this, it's got to be said. There's a particular scene towards the end of the season when he, him and Jesus have this sit-down conversation and it's really touching it's really moving and and what that leads to in the episode that comes after is even more moving and it again had my wife in tears it's just he represents this this character which is all of us in many ways who you know god reaches out to and we just don't quite manage to extend our hand out and, and reach out and, and, it, and it's 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 really sad. He's a tragic character in many ways. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it just, again, relatable. It's all about that, making characters relatable. Um, filling out their world in a way that makes you think, yeah, I, I could be that guy. That could be me. The character of Mary Magdalene and her past um, which thankfully they don't delve too deep into with regards to whatever her sin was. Uh, I know the, the go-to thing there is to say she was a prostitute. Well, the truth is we don't know biblically, but the fact of the matter is she had, she had a past with which she need healing from, and Jesus offers that healing. And that, that moment, which I think took place in the first episode, I think it was the end of the first episode, literally, I was just, I was wrecked after it. Um, just the heart, the warmth that is in that, and the, the the hope, the desperation that all people can relate to. I don't care whether you're Christian or not. We've all been in desperate pl places in our lives where we feel like we need saving. Um, and it's just, and that moment really hit me. But loads of stuff throughout as well. The characters are so well drawn. So I obviously I'm I'm a father of an autistic child. My daughter is autistic. Um, and th there's there's a character in this, Matthew, obviously, who is you know credited for writing the gospel. Matthew, if you look in the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament is Matthew. Well, that character responsible for you know is, is, is interpreted in this series as an artistic man. So the the, the creator of this show, Dallas Jenkins, who also I believe has um, an artistic child or certainly family members, um, he, he saw that actually, given the, the role that Matthew took, he was a tax collector, he's obviously very good at books, numbers, things like that, he realised that would actually be a very good character to explore, you know, a, an artistic person within this world of 2,000 years ago. And it works brilliantly. And I, I, as I say, as a, as a father of an artistic child, seeing that, on screen with my wife as well we, we we both we love the portrayal of Matthew um in this series just because of the struggles we've had with our daughter and and particularly how we see other people around us kind of look at her or treat her or misunderstand her and, and, and things it's so relatable seeing Matthew in this series and the way people react to him obviously in a time when there wasn't a label for what he had, you know. They 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 didn't they didn't have the word autism back then, or or Asperger's or anything like that. So he was just weird. He was just a freak. Um, and and they deal with that in the show without ever saying yes, it's autism. 
You know, it's like there's never any point when they say, oh, he's got this particular condition or whatever. It's just, as a parent, you watch the first couple of episodes, you know, as, as a parent of someone with autism, you look at him and you go, yeah, that, that dude's artistic. They're, they're playing Matthew as artistic here. And the more it goes on, you, the more you realise, yes, that's exactly what they're doing. And and it's beautiful. The character of Simon Peter in this as well, I, I really like. I probably... I probably connect with the most because I identify with the most. He's a bit of a fighter. He's a bit of a, a bit of a scallywag. Um, but you know, he's picked by Jesus, uh, and that's again, that's that's you know, the name of the show is the Chosen, and it's all about these people that Jesus has chosen to follow him, and they're all people that are like, why would you pick them? They're they're like vagabonds. They're the least of of this society. They're the people that everyone else in the society looks down on. And it's just, it's brilliant. The portrayal of Jesus, I've never seen a, a portrayal of Jesus that's, that has this much warmth, um, this much just life about him. Uh, like, uh, the actor in this does a fantastic job. It's got to be said, I, 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 I get so much from him that kind of makes me want to go straight to the Gospels and read those stories again and, and see it from a fresh perspective and for, for, from, from the side of things that this show kind of shows us. It just, it brings them alive. It's like, you know, when you, you hear a story like the, A Christmas Carol or you, you see A Christmas Carol, so many interpretations of it, so many versions of it that have just been really faithful and they tell the same story again and again. And it's almost like you roll your eyes because it's like, yeah, okay, this one again. And they never find anything new to do with it. They never find a fresh way to, to, to kind of tackle it. And I feel like that's totally the opposite here. This whole series just finds fresh ways of bringing these stories to life um, that, that make you think and feel about them in, in, in different ways that perhaps you hadn't done before. The production value of this show is really high as well. You know, it doesn't look cheap. Uh, the, the performances are all high grade. Like every everyone across the board, even the smaller players, you know, when you get like a character that pops up just for an episode and you'll have a, a story that revolves around them. Uh, and it's just like, even if they've just got one big scene that they're just, they're really incredible in that scene. You know, all credit to Dallas Jenkins as director as well. Um, but uh, it just, every, everyone seems on point. And I can only imagine that God is in the details, you know? Uh, I, I have no doubt about that because every, everyone that is working on this seems to be bringing an A-game. Uh, you know, the sets are brilliantly designed. They feel really authentic to me. Uh, the performances across the board, there's humour in there, there's real drama, it's very emotional, it's just, I can relate to so many different characters. Um, I feel immersed in this this world that we read about so much of 2,000 years ago that just feels very distant, whereas this show really brings it brings it home, bring, makes me feel like I, I, I could live there. I think if you look at some Christian shows, some Christian movies, they can be guilty. Uh, it's one of the reasons I don't like them. They can be guilty of like looking down their nose at certain parts of society and, and whatnot and, and, and making clear distinctions between who the good guys and bad guys are. And, and what I love about this is that, you know, you've got the Romans who clearly in the day you, you might consider the bad guys, um, but then you've they, they find ways to, to add warmth. So there's a character called Gaius. He's played by Kirk Waller. I think Waller does a, he does a really great job with this guy. There's many times throughout this show that me and my wife laughed at, at Waller's performance uh, in a way that you should, not because, you know, not unintentionally so, uh, because his reactions. So he's, he's this... Uh, He's this Roman soldier who kind of, he's, he's saddled with guarding Matthew when Matthew's in his tax collection box. And so he, he's, he's always there when Matthew meets Jesus and, and this, that and the other and having to deal with this, this artistic young man and, and just not really know what to, to make of him. Uh, but he kind of warms to him over the course of the show of, of, of guarding him and, and just his reactions to stuff and ha having to have this very Roman kind of demeanour about him, about, you know, rules, regulations and discipline and all that lot. And, and yet still this warmth kind of creeps in 
uh, many times that, that leads to some humorous moments and reactions from him. Um, it's just loads of little things like that ju that just endear you to these characters that, again, are fully fleshed out. No, one, no one's ever just a two-dimensional character. While everyone else is out there watching season four of Stranger Things, my wife and I were sat at home watching The Chosen, Chosen season one, uh, and, and I'm really, really glad that we did. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. I give it five stars. I can't wait to get to season two. Um, I will hopefully do a review for that uh, once, we've, once we've watched it. But yeah, please do check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. Don't forget to hit that notification bell if you are a subscriber to my channel already because it, it really does mean that you, you'll get notified as and when I drop new content. Click subscribe if you haven't done so and please do share this video if you are inclined to do so because it helps me to get seen by other people. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching this video and until next time, cracking.